Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video this evening talking about current events and Bible prophecy. And I need to get right into this one tonight. Uh, there are so many news stories that I want to touch on. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit, I'll do a quick earthquake report. I'm going to talk about uh, Pope Francis, the RFID chip, Israel. There's a lot going on. Oh, and by the way, the water turned blood red in Vancouver, Canada last night. Uh, the Bible talks a lot about blood red water. Uh, it's not, obviously, the blood, the water turning blood red like it will in the book of Revelation, but I think it's just another sign. It's been happening about 14 times around the world in the last few years that the water's turned blood red. Again, make it clear, I'm not saying it has anything to do with what's happening and what happens in the book of Revelation because a third part of the life in the, in the water will die when that happens and that's not happening. But <clears throat> again, I think it's just a nice sign that God is giving people to try to wake them up. Um, and today, 21 earthquakes today, a 4.0 or higher. So far, it's uh, 7.30 at night right now. Um <clears throat> including a 4.1 in Oklahoma, and uh, there was a 4.1 in Arizona late last night. Um, <clears throat> but uh, let's get into uh, a lot of news stories from today. Uh, <clears throat> first one, again, I know I keep harping on this, the Psalm 83 war, but wow. I mean, it is absolutely looking like it is forming. <clears throat> and guys, the rapture of the church is imminent. It is absolutely time to get ready. But let's, let's look at... Um, the first story of the Times of Israel. It says, and this is a very interesting article. I want to do a little scripture reference here in a minute. But um, it says, Three Hamas fighters dead in beach battle. The first ground fighting since Gaza operation began. <clears throat> As war with Hamas enters sixth day, Israel steps up airstrikes after a major barrage on Tel Aviv area, area. IDF fires into Lebanon after three rockets hit Galilee. Army tells Gazans to leave areas in Northern Strip. Death toll in Strip reaches 157. A U.S. woman dies of heart attack after a, a siren, a warning siren, in Jerusalem. It says Operation Protective Edge entered its sixth day on Sunday with no end in sight. <clears throat> Hamas fired rockets throughout Saturday, hitting southern and central. Uh, Israel with a major barrage on the Tel Aviv, area, Tel Aviv area in late evening. An American tourist died of a heart attack after sirens wailed in Jerusalem a day after a Haifa woman died in similar circumstances. I want to stop there real quick um, because I'm going to go to Luke chapter 21 verse 25 through 27. It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And two days in a row in Israel during this battle, people have died of heart attacks. Their hearts are failing them for fear of what's coming upon the earth. <clears throat> Let's continue on. Palestinian reports say at least 150 Palestinians have been killed in, in Israel airstrikes, including more than 15 in a strike late Saturday aimed at Hamas's excuse me, Gaza police chief. So again, I'm, I'm going to um, put all the links to all of these into the uh, description box so you can read them yourself. Uh, but I just thought that that was very interesting that people are dying of heart attacks with the Luke 21 reference there. Uh, and then the, the fact that there's now some ground fighting going on. Uh, the battles are continuing to rage. No question about that. Um, let's go on to another news story here. Um, and hope, let's hope that my technology keeps up today. I've got a lot of articles I'm going to be trying to find. Um, here we go. Deaths in this is also out of Times of Israel. Deaths in Gaza, attacks on Israel spell rising popularity for Hamas. 
On the Palestinian street and in the wider Arab world, Islamist group hailed for striking at the Zionists, resisting surrender. Briefly on Saturday morning, it, it seemed that this round of the Israel-Hamas conflict might be drawing to a close. Rocket fire had tailed off for a few hours, and Hebrew excuse me, <coughs> media were reporting on the draft of an, Egypt, of an Egyptian ceasefire proposal. But by Saturday evening, after heavy barrages of Hamas rocket fire on Jerusalem and across central Israel, it was clear that the conflict was emphatically still in full swing. <clears throat> uh, the rocket attacks on multiple targets in southern and central Israel weren't stopping. And Israeli airstrikes in Gaza, including on the homes of members of the Hamas political leadership, had left a death toll of some 130. There's a consensus among those who have been in contact with Hamas of late, uh, Egyptians, Europeans, Palestinians, Israelis, um, emissaries of Mahmoud Abbas, Gaza's Islamist leadership, that, they, that the Gaza Islamist leadership does not want a ceasefire. A senior PA official who has been in contact with Hamas and Gaza uh, told this reporter on Saturday there's nothing to discuss with them, and an, and an Egyptian source dismissed the notion of an imminent Egyptian brokered ceasefire. Egyptian efforts were continuing, he said, but they were getting nowhere. Israeli security establishment was off also emphasizing that the conflict is far from over. <clears throat> it says, for the Palestinian and Arab public, the ability of a little Palestinian organization to attack Tel Aviv, Haifa, and Demona proves its heroic determination in the face of the Zionists. Hamas is not indicating any desperation to surrender or even to halt the conflict, and thus the road to an Israeli ground incursion is shortening. And yet, despite the rising support for Hamas on the Palestinian and Arab street, Abbas continues to surprise and show leadership. On Friday night, the, Friday, the second Friday of Ramadan, amid news of dozens of Gaza facilities, of, excuse me, of, of Gaza fatalities, the PA president gave an interview to the Hezbollah-affiliated TV station and did not hesitate to criticize Hamas for the ongoing escalation. Hamas demands, says Abbas, who is maintaining contacts with the Islamist group, are exaggerated and un unnecessary. Well, again, if that's really true, if, if Abbas really does feel that way, then again, their new unity agreement, their new uh, agreement with the, with the Hamas, obviously is not working too well. Uh, but I don't really believe that deep down inside Abbas really is condemning what Hamas is doing. Um, so again, this situation is continuing to escalate. And what's happening is all of the nations are beginning to turn against Israel, exactly like the Bible said would happen in the last days. Um, Turkey, which... Last I checked, was a member of NATO and should be an ally to Israel. Um, is also turning against Israel. Here's an article today, again out of notes out of the Eretz Sheva. It says Erdogan, who is the uh, prime minister of Turkey, slams Israeli lies over Hamas aggression. Turkish prime minister calls Israel cruel in anti-Semitic tirade hours after threatening to stop the normalization process. <clears throat> Says Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan accused Israel of a policy based on lies on Friday as he, as he fumed over Operation Protective Edge in his latest vehement criticism of the Jewish state. They are not honest. honest. We cannot take the side of the cruel, Erdogan told supporters in Istanbul, noting that 100 Palestinians had now been killed while no lives have been lost in Israel. <clears throat> they say Hamas is firing tar rockets, but is there anybody who died? The number of Palestinians that you, Israel, killed is now 100. There, Israel's life is based on lies. Yeah, Israel's making it up that uh, all these rockets are getting fired into Israel, apparently. Give me a break. It's just because Hamas <laughs> doesn't have the greatest technology and they're... Rockets aren't exactly hitting the targets that they wanted. It doesn't mean they're not in, in trying to kill people. And you might want to stop and think about this too. 
The hand of God is on Israel because the Jewish people are his, are his people. The apple, Israel is the apple of God's eye, and he promises to protect them. And uh, if Hamas wants to really escalate this, if ISIS wants to get involved, or the, na the, the nations that are going to come together in the Psalm 83 war want to attack Israel, they're going to see firsthand how God is going to fight to protect Israel and to show that he is real and to help eventually bring Israel and a lot of the world to salvation. They're going to believe in the, in the, in the God is the true God. But uh, you might want to think about that. Maybe those rockets that are attacking Israel aren't doing a lot of damage because God is protecting Israel. <clears throat> Hours earlier, Erdogan threatened to sever the normalization process with Israel over the operation, which aims to protect the 3.5 million Israeli citizens now estimated to be in line of the, Haras, of the Hamas's rocket fire. You will first stop this oppression. If not, it is not possible to realize normalization between Turkey and Israel, Erdogan said. <clears throat> says Erdogan himself has also had a long public record of anti-Semitic statements, including several recently despite efforts to normalize relationships. <clears throat> Several months ago, Erdogan kicked and beat a protester who approached the premier over the May 24th, uh, the May 24th, 2014 Soma mine disaster. Why are you running away from me, Israeli sperm? He shrieked, slapping the protester in video footage uh, uploaded to TV. The word sperm is seen as a particularly offensive assault, insult in Turkish. The footage later shows Israeli forces beating the man. <clears throat> Prior to his stint as, as Prime Minister Erdogan, the mayor, then mayor of Istanbul famously declared the Jews had begun to crush the Muslims in Palestine in the name of Zionism. Today, the image of the, zoo, of the Jews is no more different than that of the Nazis. <clears throat> more recently, Erdogan accused Israel of being behind the ouster of Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood leader Mohamed Morsi. Okay, so now we got uh, inflammatory words from the Prime Minister of Turkey. What else is going on? Here we go. London, London, England. Demonstrators denounce Netanyahu as Hitler's clone. Jordanians urge expulsion of Israeli envoy as international protests against Israel's attacks in Gaza gather steam. Again, international protests against Israel's attacks. All Israel is doing is defending themselves from a Hamas rocket fire. Wow. It's amazing how the world cannot see that that land belongs to Israel and they're just trying to protect themselves. Here we go. This article. Thousands of pro-Palestinian demonstrators massed outside the Israeli embassy in London on Saturday calling for an end to Israeli aggression against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. <clears throat> As Operation Protective Edge entered its fifth day, Similar gatherings took place outside the Parliament building in Oslo, um, the home of the French Foreign Military in Paris. Um, so these protests are going on around the world now. Um, protesters jammed the British capital's Kensington High Street, and some of the demonstrators stood on one of the city's red double-decker buses. Signs held aloft by those gathering in protest read, Gaza, end the siege, and freedom for Palestine. <clears throat> One sign said, Judaism rejects the Zionist state and condemns its criminal siege and occupation. Others declared, decry, decreed the Palestinian Holocaust and called Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a, a rabid, evil mass murderer, Hitler's clone. <clears throat> Hundreds of Jordanians took to the streets of Amman demanding the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador to the Hashemite Kingdom. They called for Arab states to intervene to protect the inhabitants of Gaza. Some 2,000 residents of Tunisia, mostly of the Islamist party, shouted support for Hamas and waved Palestinian flags, and hundreds of Palestinians in Lebanon protested the war against Hamas. Again, you've got the Arab states saying they want to intervene, and uh, Lebanon getting involved, Hezbollah. Guys, 
read Psalm 83. These are the nations, these are the groups. Palestinians, Hezbollah, <clears throat> Lebanon, that are involved in the Psalm 83 war. Okay, again, uh, let's find one more article. This happened in Boston. i got to find the article real quick. <clears throat> I thought... Um, Oh, here we go. Let me find it here real quick. Ah. What happened was uh, pro-Israeli supporters in Boston were assaulted. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time. I'll find it and post it to the uh, description box so you can look at that yourself. But here in the United States of America, in Boston, people standing up for Israel and support were assaulted. The hatred of Israel is growing and growing and growing. Okay, let's go to two more news stories. Uh, first one, these are some articles I googled today and found. Uh, first one's an interesting technology article. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to post this to the description box. So you can read it yourself. It says over 30% of Americans have an RFID chip implanted in them and they don't even know it. Again, 30% of Americans have an RFID chip implanted in them and they don't even know it. RFID chips, smart chip technology and implantable chips have taken some heat over the last five years not only can such technology be an issue of privacy, as in hiding them in the over-the-counter medications or forcing high school students to have them, but it also has ties to what Christ followers believe to be the mark of the beast. <clears throat> so not only does this type of technology have social and ethical problems, it now jumped into the realm of faith. Now, a recent analysis of radio frequencies by the Wyoming Institute of Technology shows that one out of three Americans have an RFID implanted in them and they don't even know it. <clears throat> According to their experiment, three discrete human populations defined by geographical location were assessed for the presence of RFID chips. The discretion must be on individuals' identities because the experiment states that 958 individuals from Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin were in population group one. Individuals from Maine, Rhode Island, and New Jersey were in population group 2. That was 987 people. And 1,010 individuals from Arizona and Nevada were in population group 3. Following standard protocols of ethics and standards, the individuals are stripped, either fully nude or in minimal undergarments, for RFID frequencies. The results were staggering as a total of 997 individuals out of 2,955 individuals tested positive for RFID frequencies. That is about one in three individuals having RFID chips. More than half of them were in tooth fillings or others being in the hand, artificial hip, artificial knee, implanted screws, or for women in implanted birth control. It does not say if these individuals were knowing of the implants in them, but by personal experience I have a tooth filling and I don't know if there's an RFID in it or not. I can say there isn't, but what if I'm wrong? Uh, before its news actually follows up on this experiment in their report, they say that being implanted without knowledge or giving prior permission is not a new phenomenon. For years, people have claimed to have imp inexplicable implants that are often ridiculed or dismissed. Nevertheless, the numbers of implantable chips will increase as more news programs, such as ABC, reports on the benefits they represent. Acceptance will be on the rise as the U.S. and many countries have their citizens line up to take the chip, which is used in various fields. The chip is already used for Alzheimer's patients, pet tracking, and child safety in schools. It is evident 
that there will be a reason for everyone to need a chip implanted in them eventually. Let me read that last sentence again. It is evident that there will be a reason for everyone to need a chip implanted in them eventually. Well, what does the Bible have to say about that? Um, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, talking about uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet and the one ruled government and the one ruled religion. And uh, it's talking about the false prophet here, and it says, And he gave power, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Here it says the mark will be in the right hand or in the forehead. This this says it will be evident for some reason for there will be it is evident there will be a reason for everyone to need a chip implanted in them eventually. What would that reason be? Because he causes all to have it. Otherwise, you can't buy or sell. That would be the reason that everyone will feel the need to have the chip. And it says here in this article, some people already have them in their hand. Now, the, the chip that's in their hand right now, I'm not saying most people are condemned to this the mark of the beast because it's not tied to the mark of the beast system. But I would say this, do not ever, under any circumstances, agree to get a chip implanted in you for any reason. Period. Even if it costs you your life, even if you have to be beheaded, do not get a chip implant. Period. But it isn't that interesting that that article says it's evident that everybody will need to have one eventually. All right, one more story. Uh, one of my favorite uh, subjects of late. Um, not really, but he just gives me a lot to talk about. Um, it's Pope Francis, uh, again, doing a very good job of auditioning for the role of the false prophet. Possibly even the Antichrist of the end times. I'm not calling him that. He's not been identified as one yet. He is. There's no covenant confirmed. There's uh, it's just he's just trying his best to pull together one world religion, and he keeps contradicting himself. Two months after he became pope, he said, "Even atheists can go to heaven if they do good works." A few weeks ago, he said, "There's no salvation." outside of the Catholic Church. That's contradictory right there. But now, here's an article. Pope Francis doesn't want to convert evangelicals. I want to go ahead and read it from this. Uh, I reported on this meeting before, but this is just a different take on the meeting. It's more information. It says, After meeting with a group of Pentecostal evangelicals, Pope Francis reportedly wants to preach in a Protestant church in Rome. Pope, I suggest you just go and listen to the sermon given there. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you might even give your life to Jesus Christ and get saved. Uh, I don't think uh, they really want to hear you preach in there. But uh, he wants to preach in a church in Rome, Protestant church in Rome. Um, this article reports on the meeting held in Rome with Pope Francis and Kenneth Copeland and other evangelical leaders, including theologian Brian Stiller and Anglican Bishop Tony Palmer. The Pope wants to go to the Evangelical Church and apologize for all the times Catholics have been nasty to Protestants. You know, again, the Pope is trying to put on a good uh, face here. He's always trying to show how how uh, sympathetic he is to the poor and the homeless. And here he wants to go apologize to the Protestants. Um, yeah, then he then he says there's no pro there's no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. And he's trying to call everybody and force everybody back to what he calls the mother church. But then it's what's interesting is if he really feels like there's no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. And by the way, he also said that it was dangerous 
to think that you could have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's not Antichrist right there, if that's not a total Antichrist doctrine, I don't know what is. But after saying that a few weeks ago, now he's saying, Francis, is, this is the article, uh, Stiller, uh, Stiller says Pope Francis is interested in dialogue with evangelicals, but he doesn't want to convert them. Francis has also shown a great openness to evangelicals. According to his understanding of evangelism, as the Pope, as the Pope replied that he was not interested in, in converting evangelicals to Catholicism. He wished that people find Jesus in their own community. Instead of a lot of time to instead of a lot of time to spend with the debate about different schools of thought, one should focus on love to show Jesus. Again, love to show Jesus. I'm not exactly again sure what that means. Um, but here he says he wished that people would find Jesus in their own community after saying it's dangerous. To think that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. And after saying that there is no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. So which is it, Pope? Can evangelicals find Jesus on their own and through their own community and through their own denominations? Or do they have to be Catholic? Or can they be atheists, Pope? Do you have any idea what you really mean, what you really believe, do you really have any understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Pope, why don't you try reading Romans and John, Gospel of John, and stay out of our lives and quit trying to form this one world ecumenical movement, religion that you're calling, whatever it is you're trying to do, stop. Or you may find yourself in the actual role of the Antichrist or false prophet, and the book of Revelation makes it clear that you will be tossed alive into the lake of fire. You may want to repent, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and find out the real truth while there's still time for you. For the rest of us, wow, are things moving fast. It's absolutely thrilling. It's, it's what a thrilling time to be alive, and it is, it is getting so hard to keep up with the news right now with all that's going on. But remember, Jesus said, when, all these, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. He is coming soon. The big question is, are you ready? Keep looking up. All the signs are here. God bless everyone.